All right, guys, the online semifinals for the age group athletes are done, and it looks like I'm gonna be heading back to Madison for the 2022 CrossFit Games. The entire weekend was incredibly stressful, as are all online qualifiers. The semifinals for me, however, just have that extra level of insanity. Literally, I trained all year to be able to get to the CrossFit Games. If I don't do well this weekend against a bunch of like virtual athletes, and I don't make top 10, I don't get to go. Like my season and ends. This is the weekend that I train all year for. If I get the stamp of approval and make that top 10 and I'm going to the CrossFit Games, now starts my training for that. What I wanted to do today is I wanted to share about my journey this weekend, what it was like to go through the age group semifinals. We've historically had the CrossFit Open and then an age group qualifier and that's it. it that's how you get to the games. This year we had the Open and then quarterfinals, then semifinals, and now we're moving on to the games. So the margin for error is teeny tiny, which creates a tremendous amount of stress and pressure in a good way. I mean, I love it, but it's challenging. So for me, I tend to do much better in live competition because I can see my competition. They're right there. And if I can see you, I can catch you. I can chase you. If you give me long enough, I will catch you. But in a virtual competition, I'm chasing ghosts. I'm chasing what I think my other competitors can do or can't do. I'm selling my soul physically in order to try to be in that top 10 to be the best among all these guys and I, I really don't know year upon year like what their capacity is so it's just a blind race and hopefully we end up on the top that's the feeling I have so the way that I actually approach each one of these workouts is similar to the way I approach a workout in training or the way I approach an event in a live competition I literally visualize how I'm going to get through this event I call my shot I say this is how I think I'm going to get through this event this is what it's going to feel like this is how long it's going to take here's how I'm going to transition from this this and this here's my break Breakups, uh, like rep scheme, I do all of that and I visualize all of that. I plan all of that and strategize it and then I do my best to execute that plan. So what I thought I would do is recap what this weekend was like for me and I will give you the highlights of the actual workouts and events that I completed. If you'd like me to share one or two full videos from one of these events and talk through my strategy in full detail, please leave a comment below and I'd be happy to do that. If I have enough comments, enough requests, I'd love to do something like that. I think that'd be fun. So let's jump into it. The first event was a delicious couplet that involved rowing and bench press. The challenge was that the bench press was quite heavy, 185 pounds for guys on the bench press. So what we had was a 500 meter row, which I really tried to push. I tried to stay well under 140 as a pace, 140 per 500. That's how I'm gonna talk about my pacing uh, for that 500. Really gave it a good push because I was gonna be laying down for the next minute and a half or so. And I, in practice, broke up my bench press, eight, seven, six, five, four to get to 30. This time I decided to just do sets of six and it took just as many sets. It was just as hard. So it really didn't matter how I broke it up. It was hard to get through all of that. Then 1K row. My goal was to keep that around 145. And this is where the pain of the row was really starting to settle in, in that thousand meters right there. Get done with that. Get to the bench as quick as I could. I tried to do five sets of five and I thought I could do it. But then when I got to that last set, I never ever wanted to reach absolute failure. So I did five, 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 three, two. Got through it. And then the 2K row. Man, that was gnarly. Really, really gnarly. And on a 2K row, my best 2K row is you know, somewhere 645 in total time. I think I got through this 6K in about 715, 720. So I really pushed it, but it hurt so bad. Get to the bench and it just feels like you're gonna fall apart. Like there's no way I can do this bench right now. And then you just get it up and I just smash a set of 10 and finish it. So I did the workout twice. In practice, it took me 1825. In competition, 1748. So I felt really, really good about that performance, although it really wore me down. And I like to try to do both events on the same day. So they release the workouts or give us permission to start the workouts at one o'clock my time on Thursday. And I have until one o'clock on Friday to complete two workouts. What I like to do is try to do both of the workouts in one afternoon so that I have that morning as a backup plan. I don't wanna retest the workout, but if there was an equipment failure or something happened in the workout that I just couldn't finish the workout, if anything were to happen, I wanna have that morning space where I could do the workout again if I had to. If I wait to do the second workout until 9 a.m., the day it's due, if something happens there at the 17th minute, I have to redo the whole workout 
within the next three hours before the time cutoff. And I, that is just too much stress for me. I will not sleep if I know I've got a workout to do in the morning that's due that same day. That's just how I work. So I did both the workouts one and two on Thursday afternoon. I'm recording this on Sunday and I'm excited just to have been done, totally done. So let's jump in to the second event. All right, jumping into event two. So this workout I did practice and I felt like it went so smoothly. I was concerned about the legless rope climbs and the farmer carry thinking that this was a grippy workout. In fact, I heard lots of commentary talk about how grippy this workout was supposed to be. It was not a grippy workout whatsoever for me. It was a box jump workout for me. I'm not very tall. I'm five, eight and a half in the morning when I wake up. So this workout was just all box jumps. And I could have gone faster if I would have done strike and go box jumps. I thought most of the people in my age group would probably do be doing jump, step down, jump, step down. Because 30 inches is just a really high strike and go. And you do put yourself at risk for an Achilles tendon injury with 120 reps. So I did single jump, step down, single jump, step down. I pushed the pace and I shaved off about 10 seconds between when I practiced the workout and when I did it for the actual semifinal event. But it turns out while I thought I did really well in that event, I don't think I could have gone any faster given my capacity and I just wanted to remain injury free. Workout two was a bit of a disappointment. I thought I would have ranked better and maybe should have done strike and go for every other round or something like that, which would have been a bit of a compromise to keep myself safer at the same time, you know, increase my time a little bit. What am I going to do? It was good enough. When event three was announced, I was nervous about this one. This is a lot of snatches and really heavy snatches. My one rep max snatch is 225 pounds. It is not one of my strengths. I'm middle of the pack on Olympic lifting, just middle of the pack. And I always plan for that. And I, and I know that, and I'm constantly working on that. So when it came out this year that we were going to have snatches at 135 and then 185 and then 225 and then 245, I knew the 245 was not something I needed to worry about. I'm not getting there, but I could do touch and go snatches at 135. So it was a set of 10 and then you rest a minute once you finish that set of 10. So I smashed that set of 10 touch and go. I do that in practice a lot with 135 pounds, rest one minute. And then 185 is my max power snatch. And in practice, I did get through 10 of those and it, it felt pretty good. 10 one rep max power snatches in competition this weekend. I moved really quickly through those. My goal was to have an amazing tie break time. Whenever you finished a set of snatches, you would have this tie break time. And that would be how if you tied had the same score with five other guys, whoever had the fastest tie break time would be the one that would take the highest spot. So I wanted to get the highest tie break time if I only got through the 185s. And I really cooked through that. It took me 29, 30 seconds to get through 135, and it took me maybe a minute and a half. Yeah, about a minute and a half to get through 185, which is the fastest I've ever done 10 snatches at 185 pounds. Like that, that felt really good, but the skillet felt hot, and I just was really ready to hit a snatch at 225. I haven't hit a snatch at 225 since the CrossFit Games in 2018, where I hit it for the first time and the second time in competition with all of that adrenaline on the floor, like there's just nothing like that. And I wanted to hit one in the gym, just me and my judge and the camera. So what I did after I finished the 185s, I had, I rested my minute and then I had 205 loaded onto the barbell and I planned on doing just a jump. I wanted to hit that snatch on my way to 225. So I literally did that snatch, stood it up. It felt great, big no rep because I didn't have the correct weight. So it was a, a, a no rep, got 225 on there, gave an attempt and I felt the weight. Like I got under it, I felt the weight and it was too short, but I was really excited because I could feel it. I could feel the weight so I knew I was gonna hit one and then I just I gathered everything all that I could and I hit one I hit one I was pretty dang excited to hit one at 225 yeah! that was my goal and maybe my mistake was that I wanted to hit one once I hit one I was like whoo everything is fine I can just try a few more and uh, I missed one I took one so high I actually overdid it. I had to bail behind me, which is the second time in my life I've ever bailed a heavy weight behind me like that. And then I missed two more, but I gave it a shot and I got one and I was like thrilled to have gotten that done. 225 was an absolute stellar win for me in my skin. I was so happy. After event three, I was so stoked. I was ready to do event four. So I actually just set things up, warmed up, and I rode that adrenaline bump from event three right into event four. Three, two, one, go. And I jammed through the GHD sit-ups, just like in practice. I did two sets of GHD sit-ups. I did 35 rest. And when I rest on GHDs, I actually get out. I stand up to open up my abs, take a breath, get back in, finish the next 15 to get to 50. Eight unbroken sets of handstand walks back and forth. No problem for me. It was tiring 
something. My shoulders got tired, but those are not hard for me. I'm, I'm good at those. Back to the GHD, 35, stand up and rest, 15. I got tired and I knew I could rest on the handstand walks. Literally the first few handstand walks are restful for my core. Got through those eight and I was about 40 seconds faster in real competition than I was when I practiced this workout. And I went full send when I practiced it. I was just really going for it in real life. I got to the bar muscle ups. I did a set of six, then I did another set of six, then I did another set of six, and then the sets got smaller and smaller and smaller. I did end up with 32 reps. That's exactly what I got. 32 bar muscle ups and it felt great. And I'll tell you guys, the drama that I had this weekend was the fact that I got 32 bar muscle ups. So excited, felt like that was such a great score that when I entered that into the CrossFit site, I thought that our score was how many bar muscle ups we got. I was looking at the score sheet, wasn't even paying attention. I got 32 muscle ups. I entered my score as 32. The next day when the scores actually get published, I shows me in 27th place in the workout. My heart sinks in my brain. I'm like, I just missed it. I'm not going to the CrossFit Games. Like, I blew it. I don't know what happened, but I see everyone else's scores are in the hundreds. Thank God I had a good video, sent all of that to CrossFit HQ. They've made the change for me and, uh, and that's fine. That was a lot of anxiety. I've never done that before. I'm so precise and so careful. I check and recheck and recheck that all my scores are submitted and I just happened to put the wrong score in. And I kept checking the bad data that I put in. It's fixed. I expected to win the event. I called my shot a week ago and I did. Event five, this was one of the funnest events and one of the most grueling events to actually do. So I got through my 25s. I did 15 and 10. And then I got through my 30s, 15 and 15. Then I got through my 35s, 15, 10, 10. I loved this rep scheme. I just liked knowing that I was just changing 10s and 15s. When I got to 40, I did 15, 15, 10. And I was getting pretty tired at that point. I felt it. I was like, this is where the workout happens right here. Now I have to get through the 45, 15, 15, 15, which is what I did. Looked at the clock. I had like two seconds, went back behind the line. It was time for me to hit my 50 and I just was uh, hands on my knees. I was so tired at this point. I went ahead and I started throwing the wall, but I just needed to get some reps in. I know in my mind that I had clean and jerks coming and I didn't want to kill myself for those, but I wanted to get as many wall balls as I could. And so I, I popped off a set of 10 and I don't even remember right now how many sets I did, but I got to 31 on the buzzer and was so Ted, so tired. Legs were just pure rubber. Got the belt on within about a minute in 10 seconds seconds or so, I got my first clean and jerk out of the way. 226, hit myself in the chin. I wasn't even sure if I was going to hit this lift, but I actually had lots of energy. So hit myself in the chin, but got the lift, got one on the board, which always feels good. And then 245 was much smoother. Fatigue was still super high at this point. Loaded on 266. It felt pretty good. Got it overhead. I was like, okay, let's, let's do this. Okay, let's bump it up. I said to my judge, like, let's throw five more on there. And then I also said, hey, and also let's throw an extra pound on each side. So it's going to be 278 will be the actual total. And she said back to me, it'll actually be 273. I was like, no, 278. She's like, are you sure? I was like, yeah. I communicated add five. She thought two and a half and I thought add a five. So we actually had the weight was wrong. Either way, I just ran out of time. It was really nerve wracking at that point to try to sneak in one more lift. I missed the lift. I probably didn't set up for it well enough. I was a little stressed. I think it would have counted it like as a 273 or something like that. I missed it and that's okay. And I was worried, did I do enough? Enough. Do I have to retest this workout? But this is not a workout I want to repeat. And it's Sunday now. It's the day after I did the wall balls. My legs are toast. If I had to do those wall balls again in order to get to another clean and jerk to try to get an extra 10 pounds, oh, I would have been really sad. So I didn't. And I knew that my score was in range. And I normally don't want to leave any stone unturned. I just didn't think as I was going to bed last night, if I redo this, I don't think I can get 31 reps into the 50 wall balls. I don't think I can do that again within 18 hours. I need top 10. I'm not looking to win the semifinals. I don't even care if I'm top five. I just need top 10. And given the scores I submitted, I gambled that we were good. And thankfully, whew, we were. So that's how semifinals went for me. It was great. It was fun. Now my question for you is, what would you like me to talk about with regards to semifinals? Would you like me to do a recap of one full event and talk through it in detail? Would you like to know about the nutrition that I did over the weekend? Would you like to know the game plan and the strategy on one or two of the workouts? What are questions 
questions that you have about this weekend's semifinals that I just completed, I would love to do a bit of a Q&A video and just answer your questions about this particular event or online competitions in general or the pressure around those online competitions. Send me all your questions in the comments below and I will create a video if I have enough questions that answers in a sort of a Q&A style. I love doing stuff like that. And if you enjoy this channel and you enjoy this content, support the Masters community, support this channel by clicking the like and subscribe button so you can get notified when I release new content. And thank you guys for your support. Thank you for cheering me on through this entire weekend. I appreciate it. See you in the next video.